Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Fullmoon Adventure Club and today I thought I would share with you guys how my house is set up to run off of a generator during off-grid power situations, etc. Also when I do those videos where I show uh, a portable solar generator running my entire house, every outlet, every light bulb, every appliance off of the fuse box and off of that solar generator, which only puts out 120 volts. Um, I'm gonna show you how my house is set up to do that. Now before I do, I am not an electrician, you guys, and this is a very dangerous install. You should not do this yourself. You need a professional electrician. You're gonna have to contact the power company to get them to pull your power meter off. I think it was about $50 for me. They'll pull off the meter and then they may, they may charge another $50 to put reinstall it, but you need that removed so you don't have any power flowing to your fuse box so that your electrician can install all the necessary components like a transfer switch and your plugs, etc. So. This is very dangerous, guys. This could cause your house to burn down. This could cause serious injury and death. This is not a how-to video. This is only for entertainment purposes only. I can't stress that enough, guys. This is a very serious, serious installation that should not be tempted by anybody except a professional electrician, which I'm not. So uh, just for entertainment, I have to stress that. But the, the whole thing with um, mine is, I can run my entire fuse panel off of 120 volts because of some weird modifications that I did that I'm sure are not to code. Um, but I'm gonna briefly go over that. I'm not gonna go into crazy detail with you guys, um, but I will kind of give you a gist of how it's hooked up and how it works so you guys can just kind of use that information um, when you're planning to have your own system installed by a professional. And I will put links down in the description below um, to some of the components that I found that were a good fit for me. They've been working great for two years now. And I went with with uh, reclaimed materials and the cheapest options I possibly could, um, but they're all working really, really well. They all fit my system, but I have a 100 amp service on my house, not a 200 amp service, like most of you with a residential home would have. And when I turn off, the only 240 volt appliance that I own in my home is the dryer. And so I turn that off whenever there's a power outage, and I'm gonna run off a generator, so no 240 volt appliances. And then also I would turn off uh, my electric water heater, which is not 240 volts, it's 120 volts. I did that on purpose, so I can run it all by itself off of a generator. I can turn off everything else in the house and just warm up the hot water so we can take a shower or anything if we have an extended power outage. Um, but it's 120 volts also, but I'll turn that off and I'll turn off my dryer. And after I do that, my house barely uses any energy at all. It's, it's way under 2000 watts and um, the, the wiring that I use to go from my plug from the generator into my fuse panel is only 10.3 uh, Romex cable. And that wire is only rated to 2,800 watts continuous at 80% of its capacity, which is what you're supposed to do for code. And my house comes way in under that. And so yours is going to be completely different than this setup. Like I said, this is just a weird setup that I did for entertainment purposes because you guys keep asking me how I do that. And so after a lot of thought, I'm, I'm gonna share it with you. So be, be kind but uh, in the comments, but feel free to ask questions and talk to each other about it. I always appreciate comments as long as you're keeping it nice because I am not an electrician or a professional at this. So we're gonna check it out anyway. Why don't we jump right into it? Okay, this is my transfer switch setup. This is how I'm able to run my entire house off 120 volts instead of 240 when there's a power outage. I'm gonna try and explain this in the simplest way possible. I'm not an electrician, so use this with a grain of salt. Now, coming into the top here, we have our power lines, and coming down that big tube, coming down, you have three big wires. You have your, your first phase, which is 120 volts, your middle wire, which is a neutral return. Your, your other phase is 120 volts. And so those two hot wires and the neutral wire come in to your meter, and at the bottom of the meter, they would go into your fuse panel. A neutral on the side that connects both and then your left phase would be 120 volts your right phase would be 120 volts and when you put in a double pole breaker it connects both of them so you get 240 volts because the left hot and the right hot are alternating back and forth super duper fast at about 60 times a second or something like that so it's very very quick and uh, that's how you get 240 volts for your dryer or your electric range or everything else is running off the left or the right at 120. So all this does during normal operation when the switch 
is in the up grid position. Those three wires that come down off the breaker box, your neutral stays connected here, but your two hot wires, instead of going straight down to the left and right side, they take a detour. And they go down this box and connect to two other wires that come straight back into your fuse panel just like everything is fine and like it has been normal operation. During a power outage, you move this switch to off where the whole house is disconnected, your fuse panel is disconnected from the grid, down to the generator option down here. And what that does is completely eliminate the first two hot wires that go to your, your meter can. They come down here and they stop. That's it, they're done. So now in the down position, anything you plug in here will go up through your two wires and into your fuse panel. So it takes the grid out of the equation so you don't hurt an alignment that's working on the lines uh, and you're running a generator which would send power back into the grid. This is for safety for them, you have to have it. So now when I plug in this guy, which is an old pedestal box um, from an RV park, I change these from female receptacles that you'd plug in your extension cord and plug the other side into your RV. I changed them to male plugs. So now I plug in female side to my generator and then, or the male side into the generator and then the female side I can plug in here, safer that way. So I plug in an extension cord to my generator. I turn on this breaker. These are my two AC lights that I installed so I can tell when power is actually flowing. And then those are gonna go through the transfer switch and up to those two wires that go to your fuse panel, right there. Now, the way that I'm able to run my entire house off of a 120 generator instead of a 240 generator is because the only appliance in my house that uses 240 is my dryer right here. So I turn off this double pole breaker for my dryer so it doesn't damage it because it's not split phase anymore, it's single phase. There's not 120 and 120 combined to make 240 anymore, it's just all 120 source. So I turn that off and now everything in my house is 120 and the way that that's accomplished is because in here I have not one wire but two wires going that are spliced together here and then go like this. And so in here, the black wire and the red wire are connected over here. They are spliced. So single, then it splits to double, goes to the right side of my breaker and the left side of my breaker. And as long as I don't have any 240 volt appliances, it works just fine. Now, this is not at all anything that should be attempted by anyone that's not a professional electrician. And you're gonna have to get the power company to disconnect your power meter box before a professional electrician can do any of this. And this is not done by a professional electrician, you guys. So this is for entertainment purposes only. And I hope the way I explained it makes a little bit of sense. Well, there you go, guys. Um, few things I will talk about. Um, you're going to have to call the electric company. It was about $50 to pull the meter, $50 to reinstall the meter. You have to take it off so your, your panel is disconnected so you can have an electrician install all the necessary components. One of the most important of which is a transfer switch. You have to be able to disconnect your house from the grid before you hook up a generator. Otherwise, you're going to send that power from the generator up into the grid lines transformer will wind it up to huge voltages and it'll send it back down the line and hurt a lineman if they're not properly grounded and secured and so that's illegal and it's dangerous you have to have a transfer switch for the sake of all of our linemen working on the lines trying to get our power back on um, also the pedestal works really well for me um, I'll put links down in the description below if I can find them I think one I got at Home Depot and if I can find the rest on Amazon I'll try and use my affiliate link to like send you over to those components if any of that stuff works for you um, in your particular setups. Now also, uh, my entire house runs off a very low amount of power once I turn off the dryer, and also my electric water heater. My, my electric water heater is, is 120 volts, not 240, it is electric. And I did that on purpose. It might take a little bit longer to heat up the water, but if I turn off everything in my house, like all my other breakers, and just turn on that, that one uh, water heater, I can run that with a 2,000 watt or 3,000 watt generator, 
and I can heat up my hot water so we can all take showers if we have a really long extended power outage or something like that. But usually I'll turn that off as well. So no dryer, no water heater. In that way, my house uses way under 2000 watts um, during normal operation. Everything's LED, I go around the house and I turn off everything when the power goes off. I turn off all switches, uh, unplug anything that I'm not into, you know, sucking power from, from what I'm gonna be plugging in. And then I'll go out there, turn off the dryer and the hot water heater and, and go from there. And I usually only pull around 700 to 1000 watts. Your house, if you go this route, you're gonna, you're gonna need way bigger wiring, way bigger generators, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I have a 100 amp service out there. You guys probably all have 200 amp services in your residential houses. And so this is gonna be a completely different setup. But for people that have weird, funky, off-grid, little tiny houses and cabins, This might be helpful just so you can kind of plan your own setup before you get it professionally installed. Um, and so I, I hope that was helpful to you. Please feel free to, to ask questions and talk to each other in the comments about this setup. I, I know you're gonna, you're gonna eat me alive down there, but, but keep it clean <laughs> and that's okay. Um, I hope that was entertaining for you guys. I, I thought it was kind of a weird setup and it's been working great for me for two years and I'm able to just completely have every single outlet, every light, every everything in my entire house turned on, ready to go um, in the event of a power outage. So I thought it was pretty cool and I, I'm, I liked that I could share that with you guys. Um, if it was helpful, please like, share, subscribe. That really helps me out. And until the next video, you guys, thank you so much for watching and happy camping.